Get control of your house. Get your house. He thinks there's an intruder. Yeah, you. I need to go investigate. I'm taking the bourbon. Tonight on Power Bourbon, we are going to enjoy this Stellum flight from Chuck, and he can go in and explain a little bit. But I would just like to point out, this is the first episode in three times of Chuck sending stuff, and it's not a rye. So we're back to bourbon. He has been cured. For all of you guys that were watching that were concerned for my bourbon palate, I'm back. And of course, <laughs> it's basically barrel. So this is, <laughs> this is true to form. And I think there might even be some MGP in here. We'll find out. So this is Stellum Spirits. So this is a brand, a spinoff brand from Barrel Craft Spirits. Makes the typically the barrel batches. So obviously, I'm a vocal supporter of on this channel. So we had thought the this uh, Stellum would be a good flight to put together. Um, is it worth $100? So, is it, well, Stellum has two different price points. So their regular offerings are around $50, $45.50. And they have a, the, a rye and a bourbon. TJ, show us, show us the bourbon. So that's the standard offering that, that, that they have. Um, the Stellum, then they came out in December, Stellum Black, which is just an excuse maybe to pay, charge us more money, um, but we'll find out tonight. Um, and they also have a bourbon and a rye in both of, in the, in the black label as well. So being within my price bracket above $80, I thought I'd buy the Stellum Black and put it up against some similarly priced bourbons, uh, anywhere from 75 to 130 and, uh, see how the Stellum Black stacks up against those. So is it worth, as TJ likes to say, is the juice worth the squeeze? So number one, I'm excited to try this. A lot of vanilla on the first one, a little bit of orange, orange peel. I get a grainy note. Yeah. Really? I do get the orange peel though. Yeah, citrus for sure. A little bit of a clove spice. Ooh. That palette is a lot of fruit. A lot yeah. of citrus. And, but it's it's a very mellow uh palette. There's not a lot of spiky, like it doesn't hit you flavors, which is good because then mm. the finish comes in strong with the black pepper that's really pleasant yeah you know i don't know like that might be a little bit of an overstatement on that black pepper finish coming in strong i feel like it it comes in just pretty smooth it, it's, i'm with it's you brian nice. i think it gives it's... you a little bit but yeah it it it, 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 it complements the citrus well it gives you that variety so it's kind of Maybe throws the palate a little bit, um, but no, I, I I wouldn't necessarily classify it as strong. Um, yeah, a little bit of a clove spice to me. It's not an overpowering, like black pepper. Yeah, that's really not. You could almost tell me that was finished in something, and I'd believe you. I was going to say, not. I feel like that is either like a Manhattan or an old fashioned. So yeah. that's really nice. I mean, the proof it, it lets you know it's up there. Um, all of these, I think they range from 108 to 116. Number two is lemon pound cake, without a doubt. <laughs> Ooh, I was like, <laughs> yeah, cake. just getting the citrus on number one. I was wondering if I was just primed, but I'm like, man, that's a fairly <laughs> similar, not quite as pronounced. Yeah, the other one definitely felt orangey this one fills lemon with like powdered sugar definitely sugar in that nose yeah that palace is a lot different though you wouldn't classify that as a dessert i feel like you get a baked good almost in there but not like dough like i'll take a sip of it brian yeah i mean you were picking it up on the nose of what the palate is to me that's where that toasted wow toasted note comes in on the palate Mm -hmm. and then the finish is like doughy goodness yeah that... hmm. i'm trying to think of what to what to think of that finish actually i'm not sure i like it i feel like the like the number one everything worked well from start to finish just it you f it flowed with those the nose um into the palate into the finish and this one just kind of a, it's an odd contrast it fooled you a little bit with those citrus notes and then you got this toasted grain yep 
kind of gives us way even in yeah. the back of the palate i get like maybe a little bit of a, a hay note yeah the for me i like you said the back of the palate or oh, sorry i'm sorry i apologize the back of the finish kind of is really what throws me and feels like it doesn't mesh with the rest um that gives you a bit more of that lingering spice on the around the, around the mouth um, yeah. yeah, this one coats a little bit better, but the transition on, on just the end of the finish, it just kind of throws in an extra kick that just like isn't in sync with the rest. I just keep picturing like a lemon fruit pie that you get from McDonald's <clears throat> with the yeah. gooey insides that because just the way it coats your mouth at the end, it feels like that's what it is. Well, all of these are citrusy like crazy now yeah this is yeah again back to a lot of citrus whoa yeah i like that but not as sugary a bit more of a spice that comes in on the back side that cuts the the sweetness it's nice but <clears throat> i was thinking i feel like all the flavors are a little bit muted like nothing is coming on too strong for it's like uh <clears throat> It's got the most hay out of any of the other ones, but then the palate has got like a maple syrupy thickness to it and a little bit of flavor that then just like goes into a hay rye note for me. Yeah, as I say, I do pick up the rye. That's oh, a absolutely. bit more, most of rye pronounced um, thus far. And then it's, it leaves you with a tinger, more of a black pepper burn, something like you get off a, of, you know, Jack Daniels barrel proof. I feel like it's pretty drinkable. Like the finish gives you a little bit of oomph, but this particular one, there's nothing I really love about it. Um, it's just, I feel like I could hand this to anybody and go, Hey, drink, enjoy. And they would, they would not be offended by any of the elements. I almost feel like the, the nose on it is actually the strongest component yeah. compared to the, the palate. The, the, the back end of the finish gives you a little bit of but I would say you probably like this finish, Brian. This is, a, this is your classic rye spice. Just Yeah, the, the back of the finish, I really, I really enjoy. And it's kind of, again, what kind of, I feel like kind of brings it, you know, it's almost like a, one of these. Like, I feel like the nose, you get some strong notes, and then it kind of just dips down, and then the finish goes, boom. Yeah. Just kicks you in the pants right at the end. Okay. <clears throat> Finally, a non citrus one. <laughs> this one's for you, TJ. Did you, did you throw something caramely and butterscotch in here for TJ? Yeah, there you go. Like it? Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, that, I, I, didn't have to, I didn't have to smell it to be like, oh, TJ's happy. Okay. <laughs> Caramel, butterscotch, hints of vanilla. A hint of our friend Dickel. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I get it. I get a little bit of it. In the palate. Oh, that's good though. See, that's well balanced. It's not the classic overpowering mineral note. That's a, it comes through as like a, that smoked oak. Uh, yeah. I don't know. The nose on some of the others, I think, might, well, this is totally your nose. So you're, mm -hmm. you'll, 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 you'll sniff this all day long. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's in the front running for me. I don't, I'm still like a number one. Yeah, I mean, they're different. So this is much more the traditional bourbon and everything like mm -hmm. that. That is very nice because of the, the citrus that you don't normally get. Uh, I think one would be great just making it with old fashions all day long. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think uh, two or three to me are better old fashions just because they have more, more gusto yeah. more of that yeah. rye spice that comes through. But that depends on how you want. How you want to I will say your number fashion. four, I feel like, is the first one where I put the glass down and I still get some tingling on the tongue. I get that finish left over in my cheeks. Um, and to me, I was still getting flavor, Brian. You. I was still getting that oak that lingers. I was still getting. It's yeah. not just a. It's not just a fire. Yes. Yeah. Co correct. Yeah, I was going to say these three. I got the the burn sticking around for a while, but there wasn't like flavor to it flavor whereas with, yeah. four there was yes yeah, flavor and then you smell number five and it's also amazing oh that might be the best nose of the night yeah. right there oh vanilla caramel butterscotch mm. 
Sorry, and I had those remember. flavors that I liked in four, just more pronounced. Like that is just yeah. Sorry, so I'm enjoying bourbon. number right there. I'm enjoying number four so much. I just haven't moved on. Mm. <laughs> we lost Brian. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm just going to finish number four. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pour the rest of this bottle. And call we it lost them. Yeah. Five's got everything. Ooh, that nose. I'm, I'm still on the nose. So you're, you're fine, Brian. You got plenty of time here to catch up. Ooh. Did you guys get a little bit of a floral note on there? I really wasn't paying attention. I was enjoying number four. Did either yeah. of you point out the floral on that? I didn't mention floral, no. no. We mostly like I was hit with the vanilla and caramel and butterscotch initially. Um, I even get like a little bit of a, a cherry note back there, cherry wood. The palette and the finish, it doesn't, it lets down the nose. So they're good. Does but it? To me, it does. Maybe the finish. I love that palette. Like to me, that palette still lingers with that cherry mm-hmm. and oak. And then the, yeah. the, the finish, maybe I could, I could see where you're going to gripe on that. Yeah, on the finish, I Ryan, definitely where are you at? the medicinal cherry comes out. So I was tasting the palate for the first time, where as you said, you like the palate, and I'm like, oh, this, this tastes like cherry and like berry fruit, like dark and with like dark wood. Yeah, that's, that's exactly why Charlie loves his palate. I even get a little bit of a floral rye spice that comes through in, the, in that so, palate too. What I would like to know is I would like to, on a blind, like ha- have Charlie like, lick some bourbon and then get some like aged oak that you've just rubbed like cherries and blackberries against and then have him lick that and see what what he likes better overall like i wouldn't expect anything else but great five really good whiskeys yeah five really good good whiskeys uh the final two are very very Mm. traditional which makes me think the first three are stellum products and one of the last two has got to be a barrel product chuck snuck in i mean but you have to caveat with that with the fact they're all good he always caveat when anytime chuck sends something they're all good (laughs) you're the only one we caveat with run for your dear life (laughs) i mean i i can go like one and three are my bottom two i can't really like distinguish either or So I'm the same. Um, initially, I like, of course, we started with number one. So I, yeah, like I like that, that citrus that I was getting on it. But then as we went to these others, I, that was definitely my preference. So I was putting one as my least favorite. Uh, number three is uh, fourth place. I think I'm with you guys that one is probably my least favorite. Okay. Yeah. So let me, let me reveal this. Um, so I'm going to reveal number one. So number one is batch thirty out wow. of the bourbon. Mm. So this is this is this is one that hasn't been my favorite out of the batches, but has been. I mean, it's good. Um, yeah, coming in at one seventeen proof. This one does have Wyoming, which I think is where you're getting some of that. To me, some of that citrus. That's some of that classic. A little bit more of what I think of as like just American whiskeys, not the classic Kentucky bourbon notes. Mm-hmm. So I'd like us to go ahead and jump to our favorites at this point, maybe the top two. Four and two for me. Which which <laughs> direction where you're going? Two is your favorite or four is your favorite? Four is my favorite and two is my second favorite. So I had the same two. I figured you might go two is your favorite. I was leaning that direction, but. Um, do I agree with Chuck? Do I agree with TJ? This is a total lose-lose situation. I mean, I could honestly say I would be really like, good. if for Christmas I got either bottle, I would be happy. Yeah. So like, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, Call it a tie. If I yeah, got I would, samples of these sent to me, I would be happy. Yeah, I was. Well, what I was gonna say is, I feel like two is one of those every night I could go to. Again, I'm going to always caveat this before I get a little bit of that nickel note. And sometimes you aren't for that tonight. I am. And that's why I'm leaning towards it. And also, as we said, when we tried it, it's got the caramel, it's got the butterscotch, it's got all those very traditional bourbon notes, which I just love. So and I think for the, honestly, the finish as you just sit there and sit for, you know, like it just, yeah, it just lasts. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go for by a slight margin, mm-hmm. although 
two as we sit here and sip i've just like continue like every time i go back to it it's like oh that's really good um i just actually pushed four ahead of two for that like that exact thing i just felt like it finishes a little bit better which i just value a little bit more than the nose and it's close but i think four ahead of two is what i do unanimous four so let's start with number two uh second place barstown discovery number six. Oh wow mm. wow so this we've not been huge fans of that in com- comparative to where it's, it's we yeah. like the other barstowns yeah that's right. Yep. And that's kind of why I put it in here because it wasn't our, you know, wasn't the best of the series. Um, our favorites have been yeah. two. And that kind of makes me feel better about it, though. I mean, yeah. it's like we really enjoyed that. TJ's, uh, did you pick a tickle on this one? On there is 16% yeah. Tennessee. Yep. I, so good very, call. Very, very small. <clears throat> your, your dickle meter is tuned properly. Uh, We're very I wasn't hard getting that. You, you know, we say about TJ's dickle meter. It's good. I'm sure where to go with this. Anyway, so our favorite and out of line. this lineup. That's a bad omen. The dog is like, no, no, it is not. Rethink everything. <laughs> she, oh, oh. It's not her favorite. Okay, if this um, is the black label, I'm going to be like, this is great value. If this is the black label, we should all go out and buy a case tomorrow. I, it's <laughs> not the black label. There's no it's way. not there. <laughs> <laughs> it is barrel batch 24 Ooh. <laughs> so of the barrel batches i wanted to include one that has not been our favorite but has been, that has not been down. favorite look look them in the eye chuck Gilbert. look them in the eye let them, know, let them know who's in charge i wanted to include two different barrel batches right because they're different each each batch is different that's kind of the the point of this and so one that has not been our favorite but batch 24 was in my best of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this has been one of my favorite, maybe uh, this in batch 21 out of the last 12 batches or 11 batches. Um, those have been two of my favorites. So, um, and clearly yeah. this one did not, still did not disappoint in a blind right. with you guys. It has everything that you like um, in, a, in a classic bourbon. This is just Tennessee, Indiana, Kentucky. Nothing else mixed in there. So TJ, you picked up the dickel again. Yeah, uh, bravo. Give my assessment first, and let you guys kind of round it out. Um, wasn't disappointed when I bought it. Um, certainly better than some of the barrel batches. At you know, fifteen more dollars, you're just going to get this selling black. Um, so is it? Can it be a staple on your bar? Probably at hundred dollars, you you have to have a pretty sizable collection for this to be a staple. Um, personally, my recommendation would just be to roll the dice on each barrel batch. Because sometimes you're going to get something like a barrel batch 24 that is just outstanding. Um, so for me, not disappointed necessarily, but I'm not going to go out and probably replace this bottle when it's gone. If you're me, just go out and buy every single Bellamy you happen to come across that's still available. Because um, that's what I would do at this point. I mean, I barely pushed two ahead of five. I Like they were that close. Um <clears throat> And once you had, once you said Bellamy Reserve, I was like, oh, yeah, um, that's exactly what that is. So, I mean, value wise, I feel like that's what comes in. But yeah, I, you know, all these were good, but I, I'd say the Stone Black is probably not, not something I'd be like, oh, yeah, I need to go out and buy. Yeah. And for me, like, if you're going to spend $100, why would you go spend $100? dollars to get the same bourbon every time take a chance on the barrel batches and then at least like when you have friends over you can do you can start doing blinds and other things like that you can have fun with it because they are all different you're going to strike out every now and then but we can honestly say chuck you've got what 15 barrel batches now and maybe two we've been slightly disappointed whereas the vast majority we've been happy with. So it gives you an idea and different things like that. Plus it's just fun to see how the tastes are different. So maybe the, the only other note to add here is Stellan does have single barrel releases. Um, we have uh, whiskey tornadoes, rye release um, that they did, which was, was pretty dang good. Um, yeah. Of course that's the, that's the lower price point too. I mean, once again, great flight truck. Uh, I'm pretty excited 
we will release this video and then coming up uh we will have our 1000 uh subscriber live stream stream we are officially monetized everything like that we're going to give away some special flights uh these guys don't know what's going on are we I going spent... bahamas flights to bahamas or yeah Montana, oh Punta yeah. Cana. fiji it, it is fiji and beyond fiji. it is way up there uh let's just say um my pappy 15 is empty and there is some samples that have to go out so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get notified when we go live it is going to be a crazy fun time i've already told my wife that she has got to worry about the kid because we're probably <laughs> going to do this for three to four hours uh that's just where i know i know ed sturger is going to be on there he'll probably be the only one left at the end of the evening <laughs> but it'll be a fun time <laughs> so make sure you're yeah. uh subscribing so you can see all of that and we will definitely see you next time Stay neat. Power of bourbon. <laughs>